When you're asked to give an MLA citation, you are doing it because you have to give credit to your sources of information. In your academic work, you're going to be doing writing and borrowing information, ideas that aren't your own, and you have to tell your readers where you got that information from, otherwise you're passing it off on your own, and that's plagiarism and illegal. So in the academic world, there is there are different formats for how you present your sources. One of them is MLA, the other is APA, and another is Chicago. For our purposes, we're just doing MLA, and we're going to be using uh, MLA level uh, updated version eight, so MLA eight for our citation format. So our citations have certain elements. The we have the author the title of the article, the name of the website, a publisher, if there's some other sponsor different from the name of the website, the date it was published or last updated, the URL link that takes us directly to that source, and the date we accessed it. The reason we put the date of access is in an online format, websites can be changing. So by adding the date you accessed it, you're saying based on the date you saw the website, your information was accurate. In case later on that information changes or disappears, it just kind of protects you from any liability. So you were given an example website of uh, historylink.org and it being the uh, Tacoma Thumbnail History. So to start with, we look at who are our authors, or if we just have one. Well, up here it says David Wilma and Walt Crowley. So that means we take the first author listed and we alphabetize our MLA citation by their last name. So we would do Wilma, comma, David. And then any other author that you have, you would just write their no name normally. Like the second author is Walt Crowley. So you would just write in Walt Crowley. Then, let's see, so there's Walt Crowley. Each element in your citation needs to end with a period. After that, you need to put the title of the article and that goes in quotation marks. The reason we do that is it lets, by using the standard format, any reader who sees that knows that the element inside the quotation marks are is the article's name. So we have Tacoma hyphen thumbnail history. Again, we end the entry with a period and then the closing quotations. The third component is the name of the website. Who is, whose, whose website is publishing that article? In our case, it's History Link. So the publisher of the article is written in italics, so the, the font is slanted. So we say History Link. Then we do the date of publication. That's either usually at the top or the bottom of our article. Sometimes you have to do some searching around. We do happen to have a posted date of January 17th of 2003, but when you scroll to the bottom of the article, and this is why you should scroll and double check, it actually says that this article was corrected and expanded on May 4th, 2015. So that means all the stuff that we look at is current as of May 4th, 2015. So we go ahead and put that date, not the original publication date, the last date it was updated. Uh, and then in academia, we put the day, oh, and we comma because all of this component is just grouped together. So the day, so for, the month, May, and the year. By doing it in this format, we don't even need any commas. And then we have a, we put a comma at the end of it. And then you need to give the full URL link that if the reader clicked on it, it would take them to this exact page, not the history link homepage. So if you just said historylink.org, 
then the person's going to have to search around for the article. You need to take them directly to it. So you just copy up at the top the URL, and that's what you would paste in your citation here. So I'm just going to write in URL, and then you would end that with a period. Again, make it an active link takes you directly here. The last thing then that you need is the date you accessed it. Again, it's that covering the liability, making sure that you are protected as of um, when you saw this. So you write your last entry is accessed on, and again, the day's date. For me, it is the 12th of May, 2020, and I end it in a period. Now, you don't put each one of these elements as a different line on your text, uh, on your on your work cited. In the quiz itself, you should have seen that the there were examples of the format, but we can also look at Purdue OWL's MLA citation uh, works cited examples. Purdue OWL is a great website for learning citation rules. And again, so it starts with the author, the article, the title of the website, and if you happen to be using a printed source, then you would have a, a bit of a different entry on what you put, but for us in this class, mostly what we're doing is just off of electronic sources, so we use the example down below, the Revkin Andrew, there's the title, the page name, the website name, the date it was published, the full URL link to it, and the date it was accessed. Now, MLA has hanging indents. That means everything after the first line is actually indented half an inch. I'm not as worried about that in your quiz um, for, for this activity, but just be aware if you do not have all of your information for your source flowing in one solid paragraph, if you break it up and hit enter to make it into different lines, you're not formatting it correctly. When doing your citations, the only time you hit enter is when you're ready to be done with that entry and create a new one or be done with your essay. So I hope that clarifies exactly how to format your MLA citations so that you're prepared for your upcoming essays.